Computers keep changing the world, but their power and safety is limited by their rigid design. The T2 Tile project works for bigger and safer computing using Living Systems principles. Follow our progress here on T Tuesday Updates. I'm Dave Ackley. This is the 19th T Tuesday update. Let's get into it. We're trying to demonstrate how to build a whole new kind of computing, a kind of computer that can become as big as we want it to be. How do we do that? We do it by building an individual little tile that has display, processing, memory, interconnect, communications, everything, and that it can interconnect with others of its own kind. Next week is the 20th episode, which was the deadline to have 133 or more of these things manufactured and running together. We're not going to make that deadline. But we've made a tremendous amount of progress trying to get to it. What we actually will have to show next week remains to be seen. Last week, the goal was to uh, demonstrate intertile software motion. I mean, once we have hundreds of these tiles, and, uh, you know, as we develop the software, as we figure out, you know, exactly what kind of computational environment we want to provide to programmers, to the upper level, we're going to need to be revising the lower level system software a lot. And the last thing that we want to do is to have to have put hands on 133 tiles every time we're going to make a change. The intertile software system, it's called the Common Data Manager, uh, uh, has the job of getting that stuff distributed out. Uh, uh, we we'll, wanted to see it last week. We'll see a demo of it today. In addition, we have progress on manufacturing the cases, a little bit of information about the bill materials. Let's go. Uh, um, all right. So, uh, we've been working on uh, revising the case design and trying to get to the point where we could finalize it. Uh, I added a bunch of sort of industrial scaffolding look because I thought that helped it, and I think I, I think it does. Uh, um, but one of the things that I did I should have done long ago is now there is a identifying number uh, uh, that is derived from the time when every time uh, the build the the 3D uh, thing is compiled, it puts the current time, which is the number of seconds since 1970 divided by a thousand onto the thing because I've got these things all over the place. I, I've got these cases coming out of my ears. How do I know which one I'm dealing with? Well, now they have numbers. Um, and so here's an example of one. Uh, it, it It's looking pretty cool, I think. Now, if, if you're in a 3D uh, printing person, you know, you look at this first layer here and you say, you've got a pretty severe case of under extrusion because the tile, the first layer has not been sort of squeezed out to be completely flat. I kind of like this. It, it kind of feeds into the whole scaffolding. The look that I think I'm going for, I'm calling organic industrial. Because that's really what these things are. They're really d d drawing much more uh, flavor and, and, and design sense from living systems, from organic systems. But they're still manufactured using our industrial base and so forth. So I kind of like the under extrusion in the first layer. We'll see how it goes. So I started going for a uh, manufacturer. I started doing four up. It's 10 hours after changing the layer thickness on Andrew Walpole's suggestion. Uh, um, so here it is. This is almost done at nine hours and 52 minutes. Four of them are just about set, two buttons per. Uh, um, that's not all you have to do. There, so here's a, the, one of the earlier white ones with the buttons that have been put into their, popped into their little locking shaft. Uh, there's also these two glow rods, one on the west and one on the north, whose purpose is to carry the light from the, LED, the light emitting diodes, which are down on the circuit board level, up to the top of the case level so that you can see it better. Now, I've been having a lot of trouble getting the size of the hole for those glow rods, which are one eighth inch acrylic rod, to be reliable. And I don't really know why, so I t tried to. So here, here I was. I was making some of them, cutting them off two centimeters each, or I think that's what it is, uh, um, and got into a rhythm, and I kind of made a whole bag. <laughs> So uh, that'll hold me for a little while, although we're going to need more to finish the uh, Ring Lotus, the 133 tiles. Uh, um, here's a, a, just a beauty shot of one of these uh, two-layer ones I made where you can see the, the glow rod in the north and the west. Uh, um, so I went to say, why can't I redesign it a little bit so I could make the hole a little bit smaller, but then have kind of like relief gaps in it so that if I had a particularly small piece of acrylic rod, I don't know exactly why these tolerances are changing. Uh, if it was narrow, the, the, the inner part, the, the things would grab it. But if it was a particularly thick one, it wouldn't be that hard to squish the plastic back 
because it would have these little uh, gussets, these little cuts in it. And I, I screwed around with a lot of them. And so here's an early one where I didn't have very much uh, of the things in it. And it gradually became more. Here's the West one. Here I am beginning to print out a one with a little bit deeper cuts. Uh, uh, here's a deeper one still. Eventually I actually moved the N a little bit away because it seemed like I was getting much more reliable uh, grip, much more reliable sizing on the West holes than I was on the North glow rods. Uh, um, and so the West one looks very nice, but it's got nothing around it. So it's got nice scribbling uh, magic marker uh, from the under extrusion look uh, uh, and so forth. And here's a, a West one with a glow rod in it. Here's a North one with a glow rod in it uh, uh, and so on. So uh, here, you know, completely assembled. It comes off, pop the two buttons in, put in the two glow rods. And now, uh, oh, there's another issue, which is the actual socket holes to screw the thing down. Those are actually uh, embedded because uh, so that we can use 25 millimeter screws when it really needs to be more like a 28 millimeter screw, which is extremely non-standard and hard to get. It's okay to make uh, little holes in it, but since, since the thing is printed face down, those the, where the holes end is sort of being printed over air, if you think about it going upwards. Uh, two of my holes look pretty good anyway, and two of my holes uh, did not look so good, and the last one looked really terrible. So, in fact, I went back and I sloped the bottom better and made a bunch of changes and got it so that the, the three of the four are looking pretty good, uh, but the fourth one still sort of has that one thing across, but it's easy to pop it out uh, with a screw when you first put it in. So here's another four. Do you see what's wrong with this picture? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, what happened to the second button on this guy? It, it got some kind of crazy Hydra head. And I said, well, that's not a, such a problem. Uh, I will just go ahead and print some extra buttons. Uh, well, no, not that simple. Uh, th these buttons uh, really have a tendency to come unstuck. So really what I needed to do was to somehow make the base a little bit bigger, but I couldn't make it actually bigger, so we make, you know, a brim. Uh, so I redesigned to add a ring around the bottom whose sole purpose is to provide additional sticking surface area for the buttons down, and it has to be removed afterwards. I did a few tests. Uh, these are two different size brims. I went with the one on the right, a little more stick, although they both seem to work pretty well. And I haven't had a failure of those since. And so now my box uh, of finished cases is starting to fill up. There's been a couple of more shifts uh, in since then. I need to go into the office and pick up uh, the rest of the PLA because this roll is starting to get low. So that's the cases. Um, on the through hole parts, now the we need to get the things to attach the beagle bone greens to our circuit board. That's these things. They're 75 cents each, getting them from Adafruit. But worse, Adafruit only has 61 in stock. We need at least 150 or 200 sets uh, uh, to go. Uh, but they do uh, give the data sheet. I poked on the data sheet, and the data sheet mentions this 4Ucon technology, Inc. So I did some Googling for that. And I found their website and I said, yeah, you can sign up for an account and do things there. Of course, they were on uh, Chinese New Year's for most of last week. So I really didn't get into this stuff until Sunday and Monday. Uh, uh, so I don't have a whole lot going on there. But the long and short of it is, is yes, they have the parts and they're, they're 10 and a half cents each. Uh, but the minimum order quantity MOQ is a thousand pieces. Now we need uh, 400 pieces max if we're going to say 200 tiles max, two per. Uh, uh, and once you add in shipping, uh, you're talking $237 for the minimum order quantity of a thousand pieces. But that's 23 cents each. Uh, um, and hell, even if I just use 400 of them and throw out 600 of them, so it would be $237 divided by 400, that's like 60 cents each. It's still cheaper than getting them from Adafruit plus paint, not even including the shipping from Adafruit. So we're probably going to do an order. Of course, there's that lead time that's a little scary, but I'm hoping it won't be that bad. Uh, while I was there, I discovered they also have the part for the inner tile connectors. We need these things, the female headers that have these ribs on them to go into the things. And I tried to buy those from AliExpress. I had bought some, but now they seem to be gone. These guys got them. Definitely would be doing an order for that. But in fact, we don't actually need these things in order to send the order for the tiles off to ETS. So that's somewhat of a secondary issue. Uh, uh so 
uh, finding for you connector.com was a, a, a helpful breakthrough. I, I was wondering, am I supposed to feel bad for, for cutting Adafruit out of the, out, out as the middleman? I mean, they, they, they pointed me to it with the data sheet. I mean, in a way, this is the open source nature. And it, furthermore, you know, you go to the Adafruit, uh, forums and there are people there who are just talking about it. You know, I was trying to make an order for for you connector and the blah, 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 shipping was too expensive, but blah, 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 whatever. So I, I think they're okay with it. And I, you know, the, all of the ones that have been built so far have been using Adafruit parts. Uh, uh, so I hope it's okay. All right, moving on. Um, the common data manager. So how can we get software to go from one tile to the other, to the other, to the other, without having to do it by hand? I spent a lot of time working on that last week. I spent time working on it this week as well. The first thing I wanted this week was a, a way to have user space, just unprivileged programs, be able to have an idea how well the packets are doing, how many bytes and packets have been sent in each direction, and a bunch of other statistics. So I created this new device, sysclass ITC packet statistics, that when you read it out, it gives you a uh, a bunch of information, bytes sent, bytes received, packets sent, and so on and so forth. And we can then, uh, an unprivileged or regular old program can just read this thing and display information about how much stuff has been going on and so forth. But uh, once I started trying to use it, I was starting to get these terrible problems that I was getting these packet errors uh, from the southeast and the east. And, you know, the feeling, sinking feeling in my stomach, like, oh, no, uh, here come the errors again. But, uh, and I ran it down. Down and uh, you know saying oh there are these weird similarities in different cases and you know I looked in the assembly code is it possible I did something weird there but no but no it was just a completely stupid stupid programmer error that everybody who's ever written any code in C or C plus has probably made this error I made this error probably 40 years ago and I made it again here and it has to do with switch statements a switch statement make a multi-way branch based on the value of a variable the problem with a switch statement is once you finish one case it doesn't automatically jump to the end it falls into the next case uh, the code that I was starting with used to say return so that's not a problem but now that I added the statistics I couldn't return yet because I needed to do extra code afterwards so I set a variable instead and I forgot to put in the break statement so this is the fix uh, uh, that's just the nature of programming. You know, it, it's always one's own stupidity. And really the question is just how far... <sighs> can you find your own stupid mistakes uh, um, but nonetheless I got through that uh, things started working again I found this I wanted to get some be able to do some graphics on the screen using Perl scripts that's what I do I found this thing called graphics frame buffer I'm not sure if I'm going to stick with it but it, it, I did get it to manage to get it to work it's got test pattern it's got a, you know you can draw text and so on and so forth so I'm using it now so let's do a demo uh, uh, all right so here we have, once again, we've got the gray, blue, and red corresponding to the uh, black cable, the blue cable, and the red cable. We only have four tiles here today, but these tiles, because I didn't get around to updating the code in this one yet, but, you know, it's good enough to get the idea. Uh, um, and... So they're all running the the more recent foo.ulam sketch, which is really kind of going too slow. We're going to have to, it may just have to shrink the picture down and not actually re uh, update the whole thing. We'll see how it goes. But this has uh, got a lot more coolness in it. And so in particular, we now have, oh, well, here it is. Uh, uh, CDM, uh, the CDM directory is the common data manager inside it. There's a subdirectory called common. And the idea is that everything that is in any of the uh, co CDM commons on anybody should be in uh, the CDM common subdirectory on everybody. And so these guys all hopefully have all the same stuff in them. It looks like they do. A and now here's another neat trick. It only works for these two guys, but if I push the user button, uh, uh, here it takes a few seconds, but let's cross our fingers and hope for the best. Uh, uh, come on, buddy. All right, that, all right, that's that guy worked. Did I not get it on this guy? Let's give him another push just to be sure. Uh, um, and uh, I don't know what's going on with him. Uh, um, well, but we can go with this guy. Uh, so now what he's displaying is that's the same in the packet statics, packet statistics that we saw, but now they're being visualized. What is with this guy anyway? Uh, uh, that they're being visualized 
uh, um, by little arrows going in and out the edges. Well, it's a bummer that that guy won't do it. But uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, fake this thing out. Suppose I take uh, uh, CDM and I copy it to not, uh, not CDM. 11.mfz. Now at the moment, uh, okay, so it's actually the exact same file, and, and the thing actually underneath the hood, it does do uh, checksums and cryptographic checksums and all this stuff, so it actually has ways of knowing that those are exactly the same file. But at the moment, the code is, the, the CDM code is not sophisticated enough to recognize that those things, it, it goes by different names. So in fact, hopefully what's going to happen, except for the fact that since this guy didn't do it, it makes me wonder if maybe this guy is stalled out. Uh, I suppose we could check. Uh-uh. Aha, uh -huh. yes, it looks like he appears to not be running for some strange reason. Well, maybe we could start him up. Uh, 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 he must have died. Okay, well, good. So, uh, eating <laughs> more time, but we get to see a little more. When we first started up, it reads through, the, reads through common and... Uh, uh, figures out uh, everything that's in there and then once it's done that it starts advertising to the neighbors I have this it has this checksum and so forth would you like it uh, um, and now that we actually have done this now I bet this will work uh, uh, oh, maybe maybe not yeah alright okay so now these are the only two that can do it because these are the only two who guys who have the user button wired up the correct way. These other two are just old ones. But now with luck, uh, this guy is going to announce, what did I call it, not CDM11. He's going to announce it to the neighbors and they're going to say, oh, there we go. So right here you can see that he's now feeding a, a significant number of bytes. You get bigger arrowheads for more action. Uh, um, and now he's feeding it up here uh, to this guy. Yeah, and maybe he's about maybe he'll start feeding it over here as well it's all kind of randomized what order that it happens to do things eventually either this guy he'll either feed it up this way or this guy might in fact feed up it looks like no uh, not clear uh, um well let's take a look and see among the ones that we're actually doing here so it's not cdm11 look at that there's not cdm11 and and not CDM11. So we can't talk to that guy directly. Someone will feed it to him soon enough. Uh, uh, so that is intertile software mobility. So we're going to take uh, different files for different purposes, different gathering up of stuff, uh, wrap them up in MSE files, dump them in uh, a, a CDM common of any tile, and it will propagate. Not fast because it's a background activity. In fact, the MFM engine has been running this whole time in the background, even though we took over the display to show our statistics and run this thing, the engine was still going. Pretty cool. Uh, um, so, that's the progress. Oh, and <laughs> so one other interesting thing. Uh, um, you know, one thing about common data management is, what do you do? What happens? Suppose I don't really need not CDM11. Suppose I delete this. Uh, um, and say, oh, I felt like cleaning up. I'll just delete it. It's wicked hard <laughs> to delete files in this thing, right? Because this looks exactly like the state that we were just in. The guy hasn't got the file, and in fact, it probably won't happen before we're done with this video. But the other guys will just feed it right back in. You either have to uh, uh, do it all at once, uh, uh, you have to delete from everybody by hand, or you have to do something more sophisticated, and we will do something more sophisticated. But uh, uh, we're out of time for now. <sighs> so what's exactly up for next week? Uh, uh, we'll find out next week. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Thanks for helping out. Uh, uh, I'll see you next time.